for some superlatives. Chris, you are up. Ideally, something we haven't talked about yet, but if you want to overlap, I won't hold it against you. We're in preseason mode as well. No, I, I, I'm uh, I'm not going to overlap. We got enough to talk about here. This, this is great. I, I love this. And like uh, my first superlative is going to be like the joystick award. I mean, the Madden award, the, you know, break your ankles award by Kenny. P no, I should say it's Kenny Pickett, the quarterback. And then George. George Pickens? What the hell is his first name? I'm just uh, blanking on his first name. Uh, Wait, this really is the preseason. Yeah, right. I'm getting used to it. But either way, let's show the damn highlight because Pickens <laughs> and first off, Pickett was phenomenal. I think the Steelers won the award for best first drive of the year. I mean, to just march down the field and score a touchdown, Pickett looked really good. But this move right here by Pickens, what to look right like that, get his whole body going that way, and then jam his right leg into the ground and shake 34. Dude is special. We didn't see a whole lot of yak from him last year, Mike. Man, they get yak from him to go along with all the 50-50 ball stuff and all that. Watch out for him this year. It's exactly what you said last week. Can he take a slant to the house? Right, Can right. he get through traffic when he has the ball in his hands in a shallow zone? We saw it right there. It wasn't quite a shallow zone, but the idea that he can take his whole body in that one direction and put the defensive back on the ground, that's a that's a skill that can't be taught, and that's a thing that puts him in position to be an elite receiver. All right, uh, this one. Um, take that, Eli Manning. Remember the helmet catch, and Eli Manning was in the clutches and worked his way free before right. he unleashed the ball to David Tyree. Here's Nathan Rourke. Jaguars quarterback. He's got time as a receiver as well. He's played up in Canada. He talked to Peter King about this play and how his Canadian experience helped. But look at this. He is swallowed up. I don't know how he stays up. He gets hit again. And as he's going down on the third try, he throws a touchdown pass. Patrick Mahomes appreciated appreciating that one. I mean, look at that. We, we showed the clip last week of Deion Sanders with his punt return touchdown in his first NFL game where somehow he didn't end up on the ground. It's shades of that as well. Yeah, no. He should have been down three different times, and right. then he just calmly throws a spiral for a touchdown yeah. pass. Hell of a play. Maybe maybe the play of the, the weekend right there, really. It, it, it was amazing. I mean, um, I'm one shock they didn't call him, like, in the grasp, right? They or, never call that anymore. I don't know. They never I, call that I, anymore I feel unless like, the guy stops. Yeah, I know. I still like him expecting it because they're so careful with the quarterbacks. And then the other amazing thing not, is not the guys, not the guys nobody cares about. Yeah, you're right. They never stop that. <laughs> and then the other amazing thing is, I mean, does does Patrick Mahomes does, does he miss a sporting event? I mean, he is all over <laughs> every damn sporting event. If he's not playing football or working out, he's watching it. I mean, it's unreal. He is some sportsman. Um, all right, my turn here. Uh, back to, yes. I'm going to use the superlative of water under the bridge, okay? Because that is Nate Sudfeld's backup career with the Detroit Lions. Oh, oh, oh. That's mean spirited. It's, and now we have a bridge to water. Nate Sudfeld literally like was like, like he proved to the Lions, hey, good thing you signed that guy last week to replace me. I just want to make sure you feel good and comfortable about it. I'm going to throw two bad interceptions against the Giants, so there's just no doubt that Bridgewater was the right right guy to sign. I, and that was just kind of unbelievable to me. You know they signed him because of you. Your one thing should be like take care of the ball more than anything, and I'm not even that guy. You know I like aggressive, but in that situation, you got to understand the circumstances a little bit. He officially relegated him to third string or himself to third string after that. Well, may maybe he did it on purpose. Maybe it's like Costanza trying to get fired by the Mets so he can go work for the Yankees, right? Like, let's accelerate this. Don't ho don't hold me until the cuts in a couple of weeks. Cut me now. Let me be <laughs> so bad in this game. You cut me now so I can land somewhere else. I'm being sarcastic and facetious, but it may accelerate the process. They may not wait around to get rid of Nate Sudfeld. Now that they have Teddy Bridgewater and they got Hendon Hooker on the roster as well behind yep. Jared Goff, it could be that Sudfeld is gone this week off to go somewhere else to try to hold on to a spot on the depth chart again. I'm, I'm kidding, but maybe I'm not. Next up for the Rams, look what we found. And it's too early to know 
what Stetson Bennett's going to be. Fourth round pick, that surprised everyone when he ran, went in round four. And, of course, the narrative was, well, you know, the people who really know football know that he was a, a higher prospect and the draft experts were saying round six, round seven. He looked good. He, uh, right out of the gates, like a 17-play drive. Yeah. He threw 29 passes for the game. He was in there for seven total drives. He just, he looks the part. And that's all the Rams can hope for is they're preparing at some point to move on from Matthew Stafford, the second oldest starting quarterback in the NFL entering the 2023 season. Yeah, uh, listen, he, he, can, he can be a backup. He can run the offense. He's played a ton. He's experienced big game situations, you know, understands how to play the position and run an offense that way. Obviously smart. McVay will give you answers for – Everything, as long as you're willing to work, he'll have you programmed. Just pick up this blitz, audible to this. Here's a hot route, whatever. As long as you can take that. And that's where Stetson Bennett, uh, people liked him. It was the the guys who knew, hey, wait, I got an offense. There's a lot to my offense. So I need a guy that can process it all and, and run the show out there. And that's what he's capable of, you know. Now, we see, can he do a little bit above and beyond that? I don't know. We'll watch the rest of the preseason to see what he can do as far as playmaking ability. But I'm with you. It was sharp and polished and certainly looked like he belonged there on, uh, what was that, Saturday night, the Rams-Chargers game? Yeah, and there's that that Shanahan similarity where you exactly. just want a guy who runs your right. offense. right. I, give me a guy who will run my offense and do what I would do if I was out there. And basically, we have a connected brain. And what I, you know, what I think, he picks up on it and he does it. Exactly. By the time we get into the game, said right. he knows exactly what I want. Right. You got anything else? We, we we probably don't have a whole lot of time. No. We should take a break. No. Let me I'm, do this. Let yeah. me do this before we go to break. Yeah. Let me do this. Cool. Uh, and this was great. This was this was next level trolling by Garrett Wilson of Sean Payton. I remember the whole Jets Broncos thing from a couple of weeks ago, and they play week five. Sean Payton's rules, what he doesn't want to see on the sideline in a preseason game. He doesn't want to see the uniforms off after you're done playing. He doesn't want to see sunglasses. He wants no Gilligan hats, and he wants no interviews during the game. Garrett Wilson of the Jets managed to violate all four rules in one fell swoop. (laughs) No uniform on, giving an interview, sunglasses, and Gilligan hat. Yes, Garrett Wilson. Do you think it was deliberate Perfect. or just coincidental? Yes. You do. I think it was deliberate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't get all those things. Sunglasses, because it wasn't even all that sunny. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're Gilligan right. Gilligan hat. You're right. You don't need the Gilligan hat when you're playing a night game. <laughs> I think that was all a middle finger to Sean Payton. And and uh, week five is going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we'll remember why the Jets and the Broncos have their acrimony. I have a feeling that will be part of the effort to remind you know everyone it. of well, it we'll remind this week them. five approaches. Yeah. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.